What's up, YouTube? It is Numistaka here, back with you again. We've had all the excitement of the Mega Results unboxings over the last few days, and you've seen my purchase from Baldwin's, and uh, I, I enjoyed making that video and showing you guys some absolutely magnificent and truly expensive coins. But, uh, you know, it's not all that top end. Over the next few weeks, I'll be showing you stuff right down at the lower end of the market as well. Things that are equally as beautiful and can be picked up for a few dollars uh, rather than many thousands of dollars. So in this video, you are going to see two arrivals. So uh, I've got quite a few coin arrivals videos to catch up with. And before you know it, there'll be another mega results video, uh, probably around about the 17th or 18th of October, there'll be another series of unboxing videos. And then I think there are so many coins at NGC right now, and they're being pretty slow about all of their grading at the moment, that there'll be a succession of results videos for you guys right up to Christmas. Meanwhile, uh, these two coins came in. They are coins that uh, came in I, unusually with the boxes, because these aren't my coins. Normally, I only get to see boxes if I've bought something. But uh, for a one particular reason, I've been asked to receive these coins direct from the Royal Mint uh, by a Silver Forum member and to grade the coins and keep the boxes to send him back in the future. So I get the privilege and the pleasure of unboxing them and seeing whether there are any Royal Mint cock-ups in terms of the quality assurance, which there sometimes is with these coins, uh, whether they've fallen out the boxes, whether they're upside down, back to front, well, you never know quite what you're gonna get. Although I've noticed over the last couple of months, things have got a little bit better. Uh, and they did tell me over at the Royal Mint that they are trying harder and putting in place additional quality assurance. So we'll see whether that uh, has actually happened. So uh, this is the 2018 Piedfort Sovereign, the double thickness gold sovereign, the same amount of gold as a two sovereign, and yet they still call it a one sovereign. Don't ask me, I don't understand it. Um, I think they should probably be called a two sovereign rather than a one sovereign, or they've already got a two sovereign. So, uh, But look, interestingly, a QC sticker on the back of it so Mr. Quality Control 1, presumably the best that the Royal Mint have to offer, has personally quality controlled this coin, put his stamp on, and is hopefully willing to be judged for any um, lack of quality in these Piedfort Sovereigns 2018. 2,750 of these were minted. Um, the mintage of the regular sovereign quite often gets over 10,000. In 2017, it was over 13,000. So if you're after sovereigns that are a little bit less frequently found, then sometimes the strike on the day or the pied for ones might be potentially a better bet. Although, um, you know, in all honesty, most collectors still go for the standard regular unadulterated proof sovereign. So next uh, next up, and I thought I'd speed this up so that you guys wouldn't have to uh, sit for so long through the boring bits. Uh, although you might tell me that it's all boring, but uh, in which case probably you'll have switched off entirely by now and gone on to have a look at uh, something else on another channel. But uh, assuming you're still here with me watching this, otherwise you wouldn't be hearing what I'm saying now, I have another arrival, and this one is from another Silver Forum member, and uh, innovative way of packaging coins. He's taken half a safe flip uh, and a little bit of a an insert, put them together, heat sealed them, and uh, I am going to send them to NGC like this because it's a lot of work to try and get them unpackaged. Um, but this is probably not the best way of um, 
presenting them to NGC and they might let me know how they feel about this at some stage. Uh, really, coins need to just go in the flips. They should be out the capsules. And, they, and you know, I think it does make sense to make it as easy as possible for the guys at NGC to do the grading rather than put barriers in the way. But um, if I undo the heat sealing, I'll then have to put them into different flips. Uh, so for this one only, I have actually sent them to NGC um, exactly like this, and they can just cut them open and take them out. The flips are really nice. These are these non-PVC safe flips, and uh, they're the ones that I normally um, buy and send coins away in. Um, it makes sense in a way to send them, send them in good quality flips so that you're not presenting NGC with anything that could have a PVC problem, although it does take quite a long time in terms of storage for that kind of problem to build up. So it might also be a potential waste of money, but I think it's the right thing to do. Next one here is a proof version of the A to Zs, or A to Z, as you Americans might call it. K for a whole load of knights round the round table. And uh, I'll be showing you a little bit of something about the letter N from this series over one of the next few videos in a couple of weeks' time, um, I would think, with a little bit of a, uh, a giveaway. So uh, watch out for that one. But um, these are interesting, these A to, A to Z. They came out in March. They're not really seen in change or circulation at all. People are collecting the hell out of them. There's only 200,000 of them that were minted of each letter. And if you think that the um, Q Gardens coin was around about the same kind of mintage as one letter, um, they might very well have quite a good investment potential, um, which is a bit strange for a regular 10p Cupro nickel coin going forward. But uh, the mintages seem to be pretty low. They're invisible in circulation. People are collecting them. Um, maybe that's bad, because if they were allowed to wear... Um, in the same way as the Kew Gardens ones were allowed to wear, then maybe that may harm their investment potential going forward. But we'll see. We'll see over time how much the interest is. But there seem to be a lot of Facebook groups specifically set up for collectors who are trying to swap so they get a complete A to Z set of these 10p coins. Meanwhile, back to this particular grading coming out of this uh, very well wrapped little package is a the Britannia bonnet design from 2003. Uh, it's kind of matted on one side and um, frosted proof on the other. Very similar, in fact, the same as 2001, which was also matted on one side and and frosted on the other. When these go in for grading, they'll come back as a standard PF with a number. They won't come out as cameo or Ultra Cameo. The next one here is um, also equally well wrapped. It is the uh, Half Sovereign from the Alternative Design Year 2012, the Alternative St George. Um, I've seen quite a few of these come uh, for grading and um, it seems to be quite a thing at the moment for these special year sovereigns to be picked up and I have seen quite a few posts for people who want to buy these if they get a 70. Um, usually the five sovereign, the two sovereign, the one sovereign are I have to say the most popular. Sometimes the half sovereign can be a hard sell, may not find a buyer so easily and may not have the premium of a full sovereign. There are less collectors generally collecting half sovereigns here is another half sovereign, a 2017 half sovereign. These um, had a mint price of around about £245, I think. And you seem to see them selling for anything up to £100 or so more than that. Uh, and if they get 70, they can sell for a little bit more than that as well. So that's another reasonable choice for getting a coin graded. And this one coming up is another half sovereign, the next special year, the 2005 half sovereign. 
And I understand why people are buying half sovereigns. The capital cost is not as much. The premium when you buy them uh, around the place is not quite as much as on the full sovereign. And some people just like half sovereigns. So here's another one. This one is uh, a full version of the John Node designed 2005 year sovereign. Uh, I must confess I prefer the full sovereigns over the half sovereigns. Um, there's no particular reason for that. I think more people collect the sovereigns. Um, this has got uh, 0.2355 of an ounce. Take special note, crown collector, because I did get that figure wrong in a previous video for which I apologise, but just under a quarter of an ounce of fine gold. And here's another one. This is the other half sovereign, a special design. Uh, and you see what people are doing. People are kind of ignoring the regular ones and they're spending a lot of time at the moment picking up the special designs. And it is likely that these special designs will uh, maintain a premium maybe slightly more than the regular um, year designs. 2019 Sovereign is probably due out very, very soon. Um, I don't know yet whether 2019 is going to be a special design year or whether it's going to be just totally flat the same. And we haven't had anything which is non-special since 2015 because even the 2016 year had a special portrait uh, on it. So it could be the first uh, boring sovereign year for a while, but um, you know, for the special ones to make any sense, you have to have a few boring years as well. So thank you for watching. That is all for me for the moment. If you like these videos, please do subscribe. And uh, even if you don't, please still subscribe. Then you can just click on the, the hate button immediately. A new video comes up. Uh, wishing you all the best until the next video.